Hey, what's up guys? This is Phil again. Uh, this is the third video on the series of building the typical American kitchen. Uh, when I say the typical American kitchen, basically this video was an idea that a lot of my fellow uh, Brazilian friends asked me to do. So I, I'm going to do it in English as well. So uh, the guys that follow me here that signed up for the subscribe to the channel and haven't been following my work, they have the opportunity of uh, uh, watching as well. Obviously that here it's more common. It's the typical uh, cabinet construction methods, face frame, inset doors, and so on and so forth. So on this third video, uh, I'm basically showing how to put the box together. Um, in this case, I'm using pre-finished uh, maple plywood. Um, I got it from my local distributor, uh, Connecticut Plywood. On this case, uh, they're located out of Milford, Connecticut. So I called them up, they delivered to my door. Uh, it's a win-win situation. So again, there are various uh, different methods of putting the box together. In this case, I kept it very simple because of none of the sides of the doors are gonna be exposed. Uh, they're not gonna be seen. I just uh, pinned them from the side and I screw it from the side, they're not gonna be seen. Obviously, uh, again, there are different methods. Sometimes, I mean, if you're gonna see uh, in the future, I'll post a different video showing a different method, but I would uh, probably dial the sides and glue or dado the sides to make that connection. But uh, enjoy the video. So the first thing I do when I'm building the box is, is to determine uh, the width of the cabinet. On this case, it's just a standard 24 inch uh, deep cabinet that's including the, the face frame. So I just ripped this to um, 23 inches because my face frame is one inch thick. So once I, once I have the plywood ripped to 23 inches, I start cutting uh, all the sides, which it was uh, four boxes in total. So I ended up cutting uh, eight sides. Uh, and the reason why I do that, it's uh, I start cutting all the sides first so I can set my dado blade and I put the groove where the back it's gonna go uh, in the back of the cabinet, which is uh, I set the, the dado blade to half inch in thickness because that's the, the, the thickness of plywood that I'm gonna be using in the back of the cabinets. Once that I have that set up, I just uh, uh, move the fence to three quarters of an inch from the blade, which is gonna give me uh, the half inch that I need for the back and an extra quarter inch of scribe that I like to give in the back of the cabinet. So first I start with a scrap piece to make sure that the, the height and the location uh, it's correct. Then I just proceed to um, dado all the sides, and that's gonna um, predetermine the width of my plywood as well. So once that this is uh, all done, I just measure from the front to the back of the dado, and that's gonna give me uh, the width of plywood that that I should be ripping max to make the bottom and the dividers. So once I have all the sides dado, I start ripping some four inch strips of plywood and that's gonna serve for uh, the stretchers, uh, some of the dividers and the tops of the cabinets. Uh, and I also do the four inch strip for the toe kick. Um, the toe kick, it's a separate entity from the cabinet. So typically uh, before I install the cabinets, I install the toe kick first, make sure that everything is uh, level then I set the cabinet on top uh, for easier uh, uh, of the installation. Then I move on to the last cabinet, which is the corner cabinet, which is the biggest cabinet of them all. Uh, I leave that for last because it's such a big uh, cabinet to build. And I also do a layout on my table to, to assure that I'm gonna follow the, the guidelines and the parameters of 
uh, the cabinets alongside. So uh, I do a layout on my table. Uh, I make sure that uh, the cabinets are gonna fit within that space. Um, then I mark it and cut that uh, front section, which is the, the part perpendicular to the both corners. After I cut the front, front section of the cabinet, um, I also cut the back side of the, the, the corner cabinet at a 45 degree angle. And that's based on the size of the shelf that I'm going to be using inside. So once that you determine the size of the diameter, in this case it was a 32 inch diameter uh, rotating shelf, uh, you can cut that back sash, section of the cabinet and that's going to make it for an easier installation if the walls are not at a, a 9 degree angle there uh, it's gonna make it for a much much easier install So once I have that corner cabinet assembled, I move on to installing the rotating shelf, which is, uh, I start by determining uh, what type of application uh, I'm using. In this case, it's a face frame cabinetry, so I just follow the guidelines of the template and uh, uh, it makes it for an easier install and assures that everything is gonna be lining up and plumb inside of that cabinet. So after I have the, the shelf installed, I just uh, move on to installing the back. In this case, I just staple uh, everything to the cabinet and I um, add a couple more screws into the back just to uh, make sure it's nice and strong because um, uh, when I install the cabinets, I want to make sure that I can screw through that half inch plywood 
and uh, it's not going to pull the back uh, off the cabinet. And this is just one of the smaller cabinets that I ended up assembling uh, off camera and I was just putting the back on. And it was the same process. I just uh, go ahead and destaple everything and add some screws to it to add some rigidity uh, and make sure that that back is not going to come off um, when I screw it back into the wall. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you're not subscribed yet and you'll be one of the first ones to receive uh, a notification about the next video, uh, which is the next video is probably going to be about finishing. Um, I'm going to be using Campbell stain and lacquer. Um, so stay tuned. Thanks for watching.